Let's imagine a musician on a stage. What do you see? You probably see a person fully immersed in the music they are creating. You might think, wow, what a talented person. The beautiful music is surrounding you and you can feel the energy and the excitement coming from the stage. But that scene is only a finished artistic product. What you might not see is the flip side of this coin and what it actually takes to become a professional musician. But first, let me start by stating where um, the impulse for my speech came from. At the end of the summer term this year, it was the first time I experienced a discussion between music students and the rectorate of the University of Music and Performing Arts here in Graz. And what was the main topic? It was mental health. And today, I would like to continue this discussion with you. And my aim is to spread the awareness about declining mental health in example of music students, some of my dear colleagues. Because in the music sphere, there are some taboos regarding mental health which need to be undone. But wait, Stephanie, <laughs> these students are just playing musical instruments. Um, they are not performing a heart surgery. <laughs> Where's the problem? And to uncover that, let me explain um, what higher music education actually looks like. Excellent young musicians playing jazz, classical music, singing opera, they come from all around the world together to master their craft. And in the back of their mind, they know they take a risk by pursuing a degree in music performance. That's why they invest absolutely everything, all energy. These students become feedback on their playing or singing in one-to-one -one lectures consistently for many, many years. And since music is one of the most complex activities you can do, because your whole body, your mind and your emotions are involved, it's really hard not to take this feedback personally. These students come across many situations where they can compare themselves to others, which can be frustrating. And after the pandemic, many students lost the possibility to perform on the stage. And later on, at the end of the studies, the pressure arises. The final exam recitals are coming, orchestra auditions are coming, and they are extremely competitive. Actually, it's a paradox. Your classmate, your best friend, with whom you spend time listening and rehearsing, suddenly becomes your rival. And what the future holds is unsure. But let's suppose the positive scenario. You got the job in the orchestra. Great, well done. Then you have to deliver with every performance perfectly. But of course, your performance may vary due to personal circumstances like your relationship, your financial situation, or even your physical state. And for those students who are not as resilient as others, this can be overwhelming. So overwhelming that they develop some mental issues, ranging from mild to serious ones. Some of them lost motivation, they procrastinate. Their self-esteem declines. Some of them isolate themselves, become exhausted, fear the future, or even get depressed. But the special place among musicians holds the stage anxiety. And to be exact, 30% of professional musicians deal and suffer from stage anxiety. And if you are one of them, I can assure you it feels like you are completely alone in this. Since the wall of shame is big, which is surrounding it. 
And I'm sure that every one of you knows this feeling. What if I said, well, now I will choose a person <laughs> to sing in front of us, right now. <laughs> okay? I hear your voices in your head. Ah, don't let it be me. <laughs> Can you hear your heartbeat? In such situations like giving job interviews, speech, or even introducing yourself to a bigger group can be stressful. And you might get sensations like nausea, short breath, excessive sweating, or even memory slip or blackout. And for music students who practice many, many hours a day, this feeling prevents them from achieving their full potential. That's a reason why many artists, many musicians use medicaments. Sometimes they reach out even to alcohol regularly. And in the long run, these habits can be truly harmful. And now I have good news and bad news. Bad news is I cannot heal your stage anxiety from this stage, since every person needs a unique key and unique approach to deal with this. But good news, there is a broad spectrum of options you can try. In this slide, I have summarized as many helpful concepts as I could. If you want to talk about them later, we can. And when I started to research my strategies, tools, and philosophy philosophies to navigate my stage anxiety when performing piano, I tried everything and I did not get the relief I expected. I was often focused on how can I, get, how can I get rid of this damn feeling or how can I make my performance finally better instead of how can I make the conditions so that I feel more comfortable and I feel more secure. And I will give you some examples of how a small mindset shift made me rethink my approach to some of these strategies. Today, I prolong my preparation process and perform only in a safe space. For example, in the group of my closest friends until I feel truly secure before getting to a bigger stage. Today, I use external stressors like physical exercise or taking a cold bath um, to figure out how I can calm myself even though I feel under really acute stress. Today, I also allow myself to feel small achievements, even though it's a small practice session or a small piano lesson with my professor, so that I can cultivate this long-term feeling of achievement. Today, my expectations are towards myself are adjusted because I accepted that I won't be able to perform 110% under stress and it's okay. It was mindfulness that showed me the way to reflect, get to know myself, and to make some of the strategies which I showed you work better for me. And I believe that all of us could benefit from this mindful approach as well, no matter what mental struggles are you might be dealing with. So, dear students, dear colleagues of mine, <laughs> But also, um, all of you, I invite you to open up the same way as I did, because shared experience um, might help someone else and vice versa. If we start addressing elephant in the room gradually, we can make it smaller. And for students, that can mean get informed about the seminars which your univers universities are offering to you. Let go of any shame, doubts, or insecurities. Go and attend them. And if you feel like you cannot deal with your struggles anymore, please get professional help. To conclude, it seems like 
universities can produce perfect performers, but are they healthy? I believe music education should help students to develop not only the professional skills, but also the incredible emotional stability which it requires. In comparison with professional athletes in the field of sports, mental coaching is just essential and normal part of the training. And in the future, I hope that this kind of intensive mental mentoring, one-to-one -one mentoring, would become a part of music curriculum as well. Because this energy to touch people with music, this urge to move something with the art we create, maybe these were exactly the reasons why we started take, um, making music in the first place. And it's in our hands whether we rediscover our enthusiasm and joy and trust in ourselves. I would like you to close your eyes now for a little moment. Take a deep breath in. And deep breathe out. You might open your eyes. Let's make a statement. Mental health is the number one priority, just the same as the physical health. Say no to sacrificing your well-being. We are robot. We are not robots, but humans. <laughs>